Hi and welcome to today's video. We're going to be discussing the six major causes of canine cancer. I've decided to make this video because there's been a dramatic increase in canine cancer in the last 10 years. It's now the leading cause of non-accidental death in dogs. And statistics show that more than one in two dogs now are going to get cancer, which is pretty scary. If you have a dog, there's more than 50% chance you're going to get cancer. If not, then your next one almost certainly will, uh, according to the odds. Just a little bit, little bit about me, so you know that um, I do know what I'm talking about. My name is Andrew Lewis, and I'm the author of several books on dog care, including Dog Food Secrets, The Confidential Dog Food Report, Dry Dog Food Secrets, 68 Dog Food Ingredients to Die For, and quite a few more. Everything we do in uh, my company is designed to help your dog live a healthier, happier, and a longer life. And uh, this free video you're watching now is just part of what we do. Okay, so let's get into it. The six major causes of canine cancer. Number one, outdoor pollutants. We're talking about pesticides, herbicides, and fertilizers. The National Cancer Institute says dogs whose owners use weed-killing products containing 2,4-D have twice the rate of lymphoma. Number two, indoor pollutants, pesticides, herbicides, cleaning products, and of course, secondhand smoke. The American Journal of Epidemiology says that dogs living with owners that smoke inside are up to 2.5 times more likely to develop lymphoma. And it's actually shown that if your dog has a long snout, they're more likely to get cancer than if their dog has a, has a shorter snout. Okay, over vaccination. Talking about the yearly vaccinations, and Dr. Martin Goldstein, DMV, and uh, there, he, uh, there are quite a few vets that support this thinking, and that is that vaccines, given as copiously as they are to pets, stress the immune system, the pets get cancer, vaccines cause cancer. Of course, I'm not saying never use vaccines because they are very ben beneficial. Perhaps you just want to speak with your vet and just discuss how maybe you can use them less frequently. Parasitic treatments. Talking about toxic flea and toxic tick treatments. An association between exposure to topical flea and tick dips and the occurrence of bladder cancer in dogs has been found, says the Journal of Toxicology and Environmental Health. Radiation. Talking about excessive sun exposure. Dr. Ruth Ann Chun, DMV, PhD, says the sun plays a big role in the development of skin cancer among dogs. It's important to take notice of this one because skin cancer is the number one type of cancer found in dogs. And your dog is particularly susceptible if it has fair skin or white hair or short hair or if it is the type of dog that likes to um, sunbake on its back so its belly is exposed to the, uh, the sun. Okay, the sixth cause. This is, uh, there's some good news and there's some bad news. I'll give you the bad news first. And that is, this is the number one worst offender. It is the biggest contributor to the high rise in dogs getting cancer in the last 10 years. The good news is, it's where you have your greatest amount of influence. So this is uh, what you have the greatest control over. So you can actually have a very positive impact on your dog to prevent the cancer and also if your dog already has cancer. I'm going to be discussing more of that in uh, video two. Okay, commercial dog food, that's what it is. This is the number one contributor. Because the chemicals and preservatives found in commercial dog food have been shown to cause all of these cancers, including kidney, kidney bloody skin, stomach, spleen, and leukemia. Uh, there are many experts that, are, uh, that uh, all confer that commercial dog food is causing cancer. Dr. Lisa Newman, ND, PhD, is one of them. She says the huge rise in cancer in dogs is almost entirely due to, to the toxic ingredients commonly used in pet foods and pet treats. Dr. Michael Vim, DVM, says an increase in cancer across all ages and breeds. The two biggest factors in our pets' population health decline includes nutrient-poor and toxin-filled commercial dog foods. Dr. Henry Pasternak, DMV CVA, is a world-renowned veterinarian, and he says that in animals, EQ, which is a common dog food preservative, has been linked to spleen cancer, stomach cancer, and liver cancers. Dr. Randy Wysong, DMV, says studies have shown processed foods to be a factor in increasing numbers of pets suffering from cancer. And even the Department of Pathology in the Goya City University Medical School in Japan says ethoxyquin, which is a common dog food preservative, has been found to promote kidney cancer and significantly increase the incidence of stomach tumors and enhance bladder cancer. So you can see that if you are feeding your dog solely on a commercial dog food diet, you really need to start being concerned about that. In VO2, we're going to be discussing 12 easy ways to prevent cancer in your dog. 
And then video three, we're going to be discussing the three main treatment options that will be offered to you by your veterinarian. And we'll go over the costs, the pros and the cons of each of those. And then we're going to finish off video three with what I believe is going to be the best chance you have to prevent and also treat your dog with cancer. To get access to video two and video three, this is what I would like you to do next. Fill in the form you see here next to the video. By subscribing there, you'll get access to video two, and then we'll follow up in a day or day or two uh, with an email, which will give you access to video three. And I'll also be, be providing you with a free mini course on canine cancer. You, of course, can at any time unsubscribe. Uh, there's no obligation, it's completely free. So it's uh, if you want, uh, be my guest, and uh, please uh, make use of this uh, free information we've put together for you. Thanks very much, and I hope to see you in video two very soon. Thanks. Bye.